Hello, my name is Jasmine. I am a third year track three student here at NC State. Uh, today we will be doing an interview with Edwin Harris of Evoke Studio in Durham, North Carolina. So I first came to NC State about three years ago to study architecture. It's always been a passion of mine. And as a black female designer, I wanted to make sure I was doing the most with my career. So uh, with this interview with Edwin, uh, he's my mentor. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about what it's been like for him and how we can help influence the generations to come. How are you doing? I'm okay, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, just hanging out today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us um, and sort of doing this interview. So I guess let's start. Um, welcome, Edwin. Just tell me a little bit about yourself. I am um, uh, trying to think the best way to start. Um, I am a co-founder and design principal at Evoke Studio Architecture. So, um, and we have been practicing. We've been open now for almost, well, for four years now. And so, um, and I'm also a... Uh, professor of practice at North Carolina State University. All right. Um, and sadly, you've never been one of my teachers, but um, I've enjoyed having you as a mentor. I appreciate uh, so, it. Of course. So um, after, I guess, what's your career like after leaving the College of Design, even though you're still teaching here? So how did you want to sort of start your practice? Tell me a little bit more about that. So I... Um, during school, I interned um, at a few firms, but also notably uh, O'Brien Atkins, um, which is in the RTP. And then from there, upon graduation, I, I worked with uh, at Duda Payne Architects for a few years. And then from there, I went to work with Phil Freeline at the Freeline Group, and I worked with him uh, almost nine years. And then from there, we opened our, uh, our office, uh, Evoke Studio. All right. I am learning new things. I did not know that you worked for Due to Pain, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I worked so, there for two and a half years. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what got you interested in design in the first place? Um, I've always been kind of interested in just design and really like architecture. I mean, not architecture, but just art and design. And so like uh, initially I was really like drawn toward like car design, shoe design and, and any of those types of things. And then um, at some point that shifted toward architecture and design. And, and so, but I've always kind of had that interest um, in terms of just creativity and kind of pushing that as something that I was interested in. I could, I could definitely see that. You've always been a very creative person. Uh, so what sort of encouraged you to pursue your passion with design for architecture specifically? Uh, my grandfather. So my grandfather is, um, he worked for the federal government. He's also a pastor and all this stuff, but he, he knew what I was interested in. And so he kind of pushed to find the things that I was most interested in. And for him, um, cause I didn't even know that industrial design was a thing. So, you know, I just knew I liked designing shoes and cars. Right. But I didn't know what it was and we were trying to figure it out. Um, and long story short, it kind of got to the point where it was like, I really couldn't figure it out. And so at that point, my, my, my grandfather was like, how about you become an architect? And I was like, okay, cool. And so um, at that point, I was like all into it. And so uh, around high school, I, took, I started taking drafting class and I realized like, I really like doing this type of stuff. Um, and at that point, even at that point, I still didn't, I couldn't name you one architect. I never met one. I didn't know anything about it. All I knew was that architects design buildings. And so that's what I was going to do because it was designed. You get to draw, you get to create things. And that's what I was interested in. So from that point on, I kind of pushed toward architecture. But, you know, like I said, my grandfather, uh, amongst other people, but my grandfather, you know, primarily was the one who kind of like really kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just promoted and kind of um, uh, just fed into my passion, I guess. I can't think of the word. I know it's escaping me right now, but, but anyway, encouraged. There you go. Right. Okay. So um, you were talking about uh, as far as encouraging passion, but at that moment, well, at that time in your life, you'd never met an architect. Um, when did, I guess, you first meet somebody who – who was in the field who really helped you pursue your dreams of being an architect? 
that's another interesting interesting story. So um, something that a lot of people don't know is it took me three tries uh, to get into the school of design. And so I got denied, um, yeah, twice. And so one right out of high school and then another one when I was actually in school. And so long story short, my grandfather, um, again, he's vital to uh, me even becoming an architect and, you know, pursuing my passion. He found Phil Freeline. And so when I was a freshman in college, I actually met Phil Freeline. He actually, my grandfather called him up and was like, I got a grandson who uh, is interested in becoming an architect but he, you know, he wants to get in school and figure out how he can get in school. And so Phil met with me on a good Friday um, at his office. And I went and um, met with him, talked with him. And he was like, we're going to get you to the school of design. And so um, he told me, um, he, he introduced me to one of my lifelong friends now, um, James Stacey Utley. And him, him and James uh, both told me like, hey, man, you need to meet Marvin Motley. And so Marvin Motley, who was the Dean of Student Affairs at um, NC State School of Design at the time, or College of Design at the time, um, I met with her, talked to her, showed her what I was you know, capable of, and even showed Phil my portfolio and stuff. And at that point, you know, everything kind of went into motion. So Phil Freelon, um, one, is vital to me becoming an architect, but also, um, me even get into the College of Design period, right? And so, um, and I can tell you a lot of stories, you know, about that later. Tell me a little bit more about Evoke, sort of, what's your guiding principles or philosophies when starting your own company? I mean, it's simple, right? Um, for us, we believe in the power of design. And so we believe that design has the capacity, uh, a great design has the capacity to really kind of improve the lives of people. So we're really ambitious about design and its capability. And so every project that we take on, the smallest to the largest is always about how can we create spaces and designs that are going to improve the lives of anyone who, you know, experiences it. And so that's really how we, we look at things. And so um, everything is an opportunity, whether it's a private project or a public project, whether it's a sculpture, library, or office building, all those things and are things that we have worked on, but the primary motivation is to improve the lives of anyone who uh, encompasses it or yeah, encompasses it so, and experiences it. Okay. That's, that's a really good philosophy. And I think something that's important for a lot of people to live by. Um, so do you think that as a black designer, I guess, how does culture shape your experience and how you approach um, design or your life as a designer? I mean, it's, you can't separate the two. For me, I can't separate the two, right? It's, it's who I am. I'm a, I'm a black man. I grew up in, you know, in America as a black man. And so that's who I am and that's how, what has influenced me. And so these experiences for better or for worse have always been part of my design, uh, my take on design. Uh, it's the lens in which I view, um, you know, the world, right? And so this is how I view the world is the lens in which I view design. And so all of those things I believe are attributes because, you know, the perspectives that I have um, and the experiences that I have have only helped to kind of inform my kind of aspirations for design and for people who experience the designs that I'm a part of and I create. All right. So um, that being said, what message or um, words would you leave for people who are coming into this field? Um, well, particularly, I mean, for anyone, you can do it. I mean, that's, that's the, it's simple, it's cliche, but it's the truth, right? You can absolutely do it. And I think um, there's, there's paths to doing it, but I think first and foremost, you have to be passionate about it, right? And like really right. think, okay, is this something I really want to do? But then you have to actually manifest that passion, right? So that passion has, you know, uh, faith about works is, is, is dead, right? So the point is you have to actually like show that you're passionate about it. So, you know, for me, it's like putting in the work to prove or show my passion and then reaching out to people, right? So for me, let's say, there's someone that you see like a, a Phil Freelon or someone like that. 
learn about that person and say, okay, what did that person do to get to where they are? And then reach out to them, but don't just reach out to them cold. Do your research and figure out what those things are and then kind of learn about them. The other thing I would say, uh, as a, as a black person in America, um, and, I, and I really mean this, and I'm really passionate about it, is that I feel, and I don't want to get on a soapbox, but I feel like we've had, you know, our ancestors, our grandparents, our great grandparents have fought so hard and not just, you know, them, but they fought so hard for freedoms and they've sacrificed for freedoms, um, that they never achieved or never experienced for us. And I think, you owe it to them, you owe it to yourself to maximize your potential as who you want to be in life, whether it's a designer or whoever, but you owe it to, your, to them and to yourself to really just maximize your full self and maximize your full potential. So um, that's the way I look at my life is that, you know, anything that I'm doing, I'm trying to strive for greatness, not just for myself, but for those who come before me. And, you know, I look back, you know, people always ask that question, like, if you could have dinner with someone that was, you know, anyone in, 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 in history, what, who would it be? For me, I was like, man, you know, I would love to like, it to be like my great, 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 great grand, grandmother or grandfather, right? And just tell them, look, it wasn't all for nothing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm realizing and, and becoming who you wanted me to be and who you never thought of, right? So I think those are the things that I think about and that I'm encouraged by. And so, again, I'm going to get off my soapbox. But those are the things that I would tell people in terms of that are trying to pursue um, design or anything, any field in life. So that was a long answer. The perfect answer. That was the perfect answer. I think that's something that we all strive to do. Um, just continue to leave a lasting impression. Um, so I guess my final question is how can we continue to encourage others to learn um, and become more interested in design for those who maybe don't know that this is an option for them? Just be excited about what you do. Like, I love what I do. That's sincere. Like, I can't tell you how much I can't think of anything else I want to do other than what I do. I go to work every day there's not great days and you know, like things that you don't want to do all the time, but like my job and my, my career is my passion and I love it. And I think the excitement that I have about design is something I want to be infectious. And so I want people to understand that you're changing the world with design, right? Like in any facet of design, you're literally changing the world and it's becoming a physical man manifestation of the things that are in your head and your heart and your mind in your spirit and all those things are things that I get excited about and I can't see how anyone couldn't get excited about it. So I think for me, the best way to got to encourage people to uh, pursue design is to, to share that excitement. All right. All right, Edwin, thank you so very much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for being an amazing mentor, teacher, and just all around amazing person. Well, thank you for having me. And those words are way too kind. <laughs> Never too kind. Um, I will stop by sometime later to show you my finished product and we'll see how that goes. Cool. All, All right. right. Nice. So, Bye.